All right, welcome to this episode, episode number one of Clear Tone Podcast. I'm your host, David Rodriguez, and today's special guest is Mr. Wilker Augusto. So, Wilker, thank you for being on the first episode. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, yeah. it's an honor to be here. <laughs> it's an honor to have you, my friend. It's an honor to have you. Great. So, first question, just to get people, you know, we're talking, it's, it's a podcast about um, just music oriented. We want to talk about talk to different folks about their careers in music and what they're what they're doing. Um, you know, it's a little bit for educators, um, instrumental educators, you know, vocal people, people who are out, you know, doing freelance work, studio work, therapists, you know, YouTube content creators, whatever, whatever your space is. You know, this is going to be for for everybody. Hopefully, somebody can find uh, something useful here. So, Wilker, I want to go ahead and ask you. So. You know, you're a musician. You you are just finished your master's degree in conducting. Um, you've you've been involved with a number of different groups, professional organizations, um, as as a clinician, um, as a coach, um, as assistant director. So, kind of start us off. What was your journey like? Like, when did you first start to learn an instrument? Okay, I would say that. When I first started to learn music, uh, I was wasn't at church. I was three years old, and, and my neighbors asked my parents to take me to the church to do like Bible school on Sundays, and they have this um, children choir, uh, and it was my first contact with music. So. I started to be a part of the church and, and my whole family too. And I was always singing in the church in this children choir um, from my three years old until my 12 years old, I would say. Okay. And they start to have a worship band in the church. So I started to sing. Um, so by the time between like my 13, I started, uh, like was my middle school in Brazil, I'd say that. Okay. Um, I started to be a part of the marching band in the school. So I, I, I always, my dream was to play trumpet, but the school was a small school with no money. So they didn't have like enough instruments for everyone. So when I tried my first time trumpet, they didn't have trumpet. So they have a spot in a, in a percussion. So I went to percussion first. Um, and then I need to change for different school. I stopped to play percussion. And in high school, I try again, but one more time, they didn't have instrument enough to everyone. So I uh, play percussion again. And year after that was my, I would say my sophomore year in high school. Um, I, they finally, I finally find a, a trumpet available for me. So. That was when they started to play trumpet. Um, and then I started, a uh, year after that, I started to go to conservatory of music. So I did eight and a half of conservatory in trumpet. But I had, I had some like ambush issues because we had so many, men, the teacher was not, how can I say that? It's a, he didn't have time to give attention to everyone. Right. So, I didn't have the right instruction to play trumpet. So I start I started to play with the wrong embouchure. It was really wrong. So when I went to conservatory, the teacher was a trumpet teacher. He said, your embouchure is it's all over the place. We need to fix that. But the process was was not good to like to change. So I decided to stop trumpet, to play trumpet. I was really disappointed because and you know, I don't know teenager and everything going on and said, oh, I played two years, almost two years of trumpet and I played wrong and I, it was a waste of time. And, but it was a good thing. So I start to, to see someone play different instruments. So in conservatory, I have more people, more instruments to see. So I saw the fresh horn. And when I listened to the fresh horn, I said, okay, that's the sound that I love it. And I talked with the teacher and I said, hey, I was doing trumpet conservatory, but can I switch for fresh horn? And he said, oh yeah, there's no problem. So yeah, so since then, um, I did my bachelor degree in fresh horn. 
Uh, I finished conservatory first, French one, and then I did my bachelor's degree. And then I worked as a band director in Brazil for a lot of years, and, and then moved to the United States to do my art certificate in French one performance at Azusa Pacific University. And right when I finished my art certificate, I started to do my master in conducting because it was something that I learned during my music journey to love the same way that I love play French horn. So yeah, and now, now I'm, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you <laughs> unpacked a lot there. So we're gonna get into a little bit of specifics. So you started singing in the choir, a children's choir at the age of three, and you kind of did that until about middle school age right when you were a teenager and then you picked up the trumpet. Yes. And so when you're at conservatory. I went to percussion first. Oh, I had, you went to percussion, sorry. So I, had, did, I had this two year gap in, in percussion, but it was good. I, I would say that everything was good for me because in the time that I, I, I played percussion was good to make my strength and rhythm strong. So when right. I went to play like melodic instruments, I had this kind of rhythm sense, like really strong, so it was really good. Okay, and so you were playing percussion and then you went over to the trumpet. Now, can you talk a little bit about like the education? You're, you, what, what is conservatory? It, was that like, that's separate from the public school system in Brazil? Or is that yes. like more specialized? So at the Federal University of my state in Brazil, they have the undergrad course, but before the undergrad, they have this kind of conservatory that you can expand between three and five years. So you have like music theory class and you have instrumental class. So we had these two classes. It's, it's, it's a separate of the high school of the school system. Because actually in Brazil, we don't have a, in the, in the, in the educational system, we don't have music classes. So we have bands, but we don't have music program. We have band program, but it's it's really like, it's not like here in the United States that you, the music is part of the, the class. You have a music class that you can be like in a band or orchestra choir. In Brazil, you have band programs, it's, it's different. Okay, so it's like an art school almost. Yes, so we, we you can go there like, through you or I would say now I think they have class for kids like, okay but the, during my time was something like between 12 and 16 years old so it's something between your know, middle school and high school and high school okay yeah so the the conservatory is that separate from like a middle school or the high school or you're still learning those concepts, like whatever the general education is, do you go to a different, are they separate schools? Or are they one of the same, are they, I'm sorry, are they, they're separate schools. So you would go, would you go to your, you know, do your general classes and then later time you would go to the conservatory afterwards? Yes, so I had, I had my general class in the high schools during the morning. Okay. And I went to conservatory at the afternoon. Okay, so it's a, it's a different, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a different place in a different like, environment because the conservatory was related with the university. Oh, okay. So what's kind of, they create this conservatory to like prepare kids to have the basic skills, basic skills to start the underground. So we had music theory, like year training class and, and, and instrument class so that's that's was not and also they have like small ensembles like chamber orchestra or like symphonic band to play mm -hmm. but it's it's not like related with general education something like apart okay and so that is tuition based right you have to pay to be there yeah we need to pay like uh it was not a lot because it was because the universe was a part of the federal government was okay. a federal university. So we just pay something like to rent the instrument and, and to pay some like extra fees, but it was not a lot. Okay. Is it audition based? Like you have to have a talent in order to be a part of the conservatory yeah. or, okay. Yeah. We need to do like an interview with the teacher and based off 
if the teacher had, okay, I have like six positions for trumpet in the conservatory. So basically on you know, your know, like skills that you learn in high schools and your basic in the marching band. So you can be in the first six to get the spot. Okay. 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 So, so you played percussion, you played the trumpet. And then after that, after having some, some, some where your embouchure wasn't, you weren't using a, a correct embouchure. What, like, was it like the way your embouchure was, was it preventing you from trying to fix it? Or you just didn't have the time be, being a part of the conservatory and, you know, having to meet the demands of the repertoire that you're playing and, yes. and things like, okay. Because it's, my embouchure was all the way down. Oh, wow. So I was playing the mid of my upper lip. Mm -hmm. I didn't have like endurance. My endurance was nothing. So when I, when you start to go through the through the method books of the trumpet, carbon, all those technique books, yeah, I started struggling because I couldn't go the higher range. And and, and my team said, you, we need to start to do this process of change. It's kind of relocate your embouchure, put in the right position. And by that time, it's like relocate the embouchure. It was kind of start again. Right, yeah, it's so like, back, yeah. yeah. So, and, and we need, by that time, I need to like, to be aware if I didn't get time to practice enough, I couldn't lose my position in conservatory and I also lose my position in the, the band because I didn't have money to buy instrument. So mm. my instrument was for the band and it was, was kind of really hard time for me. And I just decided, you know why? I want to finish my music theory class and, and see what's happened. So during this time that I was doing, having only music theory class, I'd, I, I talked with the French one teacher and said, yeah, let's try. So he gave me the opportunity and the first try just like was, I would say that was kind of natural. Like the sound was, I feel, I felt so much comfortable playing French one in the, the trumpet and said, okay, now you find your instrument. Oh, okay. And then you just never turned her away. You never looked back. No, <laughs> <laughs> I still, I still have the, you know, the, all the, the those trumpets, techniques, books that I still have and, and the repertory is something that I think everything, like, I would say that I didn't waste my time. Now I, I, I have different way to think. I think I learned more and, and the way that I like, I, will, I started to teach band in, in school as well. So those techniques that I learned in the trumpet helped me to teach my students in the right way to don't waste time like I did. Like I, I, I said waste time again, but to, to don't like learn in with the wrong, like in brochure with, doesn't know. It's like I said, I want to teach my, my students in the right way. Okay. I don't want my students like to learn wrong to then fix. So I have I, to fix so it was something that yeah it was something that was hard for me but it was a good a good a good time a good experience okay no yeah because it makes you a better person now you know how to how to like you said how to fix it or how to how to identify it so that way it's better no yeah I, I see um so like when you were in the conservatory did you after the conservatory then you go into the university correct Yes, I, I had a gap because okay. I finished the conservatory and you know, my family was poor mm -hmm. and I need to start to work. And, and by that time I didn't have a job with music. So I think I had a gap between, I think about years, like six years gap. Okay. And I, I was just playing French horn by my own because I finished the conservatory, so I just paid the rent of the instrument and to keep playing French horn. But I didn't, I had this kind of time period that between conservatory and the undergrad. Okay, so it was like a grace period. Like what we call, yeah. we call it a grace period, yeah. <laughs> okay, and so then when you went to the conservatory, so you knew that you wanted to do music, right? Once you go, because the conservatory, can you talk about that? Because I think that might be a little bit different than here in the U.S. 
Like yes, like, I you know it's well. I felt like music for me was part of my life. It was something stronger than I, I can't explain. So during this gap period, I work in a different place. I work in a, I work in offices. I work in stores. I work in factories. I work in a, like in restaurants, and, and nothing like complete me. I, I didn't feel like complete. Uh, was different when this when I was doing music. When I was doing music for me, it was just like I, I felt so good. That's like that's my place, right? Um, and, and I tried really hard to come back to music. Like I said, I work in a different like kind of professions, but I said I want to come back to music. And, and, and like it, like you said, it's different Brazil. The situation about Brazil and the United States. Um, we don't we don't have the same like educational system, and in Brazil we don't have as much opportunity that the kids here in US they have. Okay. So it's something that if you want, you need to fight for it. You really need to fight, uh, and and I did, and I was, man, I, I was kind of, it's kind of played a move in my head right now, and yeah. things that. I passed. I passed to to be where I am right now. It was. I need to fight with uh, my family because they said, "Oh, music doesn't pay your bills and blah blah blah." Um, I need to fight with like like relatives because they said, "Oh, you need to do something else. Music is not going to support your family." And and I think it's. For me right now, it's just like I feel proud of myself because it's I'm the only one of my family that went to college um, and have a master degree. So it's it's and and also like move to a different country, like try start for the start over again. Yeah, it's like yeah, I think that's part of my life. You know, it's like it's I always start over, start over, start over. <laughs> Let's make you strong. Yeah, yeah, and then you you learn from that, and then it, it again it makes it makes you stronger. So so you already knew, okay, I'm conservatory. I'm gonna do, you know, my career is gonna be in music. Did you know exactly what you want to do in music? You, you know, you want to be a performer, an educator, uh, you know, a director. What what, what how did, like, what were your thoughts going into it? For me, I think the things wait more for the educational side. Okay. Even like I play a a lot of as a performer. I play in orchestras, in professional orchestras, in professional concert bands and professional ensembles. But I always had this, like my professional side, like as a performer side and my education side, they work together. Because it's, for me, that's my belief. I think as a teacher, you need to keep up with, with your performance skill, skills. You know, it's, it's not excuse. Sorry, my 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 English. It's like no, no. performance skills because it's one time you when you're playing, make you keep your knowledge about playing better to tell this for your students. So it was something that I know some people that when they start to go to educational educational side, they said I'm not playing anymore. But it's it's I I kind of understand, but I think it's both. Things are related, and that's that's the way that I, I grow. Was I was always like teaching and playing at the same the same time. So it's it's. Um, I feel now that I'm more uh, in the educational side than the performer side, but for me both are important. Okay. No. Yeah, I felt the same way about it. Like I when I went to get my degree, I said, okay, I want to do performance. I want to do education, even though I knew well, I'm not going to play with professional organization, but I, I wanted to be good enough so that way I could play and I could bring those experiences with me. And then um, like sometimes when I do things, when I play, I'll, you know, I'll record myself. And then I, you know, I'll, when we talk, when I talk to this, my students, like, oh, look, check this out. And I'll upload something, you know, a little snippet of our practice. And they're like, oh, that's really cool. You know, where was that? And, you know, and I could talk about that and they see me in a different context. Right? Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't see me in the context of a teacher. They see me in the context of somebody else being involved in music. 
So they know that, you know, I'm not just telling them what to do. I'm also participating in that process too. So I, you know, yep. I think it, there's a couple of different elements there, but yeah, um, you're, you're, you want to keep up your performance chops so that you can relate that with your students and yes, things that they need to be able to accomplish or things that you need to be cognizant of, you, you know, you have that experience. Oh, I know what that feels like. Yeah. So no, I, those are super, super important. Um, you know, what is, so when you, before, when you were playing the French horn, you got private instruction through the school or you, you didn't have any private instruction at all? I had it for the conservatory. Okay. And then when you went to the or, university, was that a little bit different? He was the same teacher because okay. the conservatory was related to university. So he gave me like the, the basic, the fundamentals of French horn. So when I started to do my undergrad, it was the same teacher. So I didn't have problem like to keep up the technique because he gave him the basements the way that he wants to like to build his students, his like his studio. So I had the basic. And when I start, was just like, okay, are you ready to start? Okay. Yeah, because you didn't have other other French horn teachers teach you their techniques. And then when you got to the conservatory, they yeah. had to relearn some of the, you know, what how he wanted yeah. to or what he thought was important. It was the same teacher, right? This yeah. was really, really good because uh, uh, sometimes when you as a university teacher, when you get some students that they don't have the basic, the fundamental, like, skills that you need. So you need to, like, kind of rebuild that student. Right. And so you didn't have to go through that. You were already with that teacher. Yes, yes. So for me, it was a really easy process. Okay. So what you, now you've taught here in the United States um, in different capacities. You've led the, um, the conservatory at APU there. Um, you've also been assistant band director with Los Osos High School and Glendora High School. What, through those experiences, what are some of the difference, similarities and differences between music in Brazil and, and here in the United States? All right, well, yes. Yeah, so here I had the opportunity to work as a director of the orchestra. Okay. From the uh, Azusa Conservatory. I work with uh, uh, Glendora High School as an assistant with Mr. Schwartz. And with those also, I was, I was one of the conductors for the concert bands during the course of season. It was a great experience for me. It it's, was a way to, to learn about the music season in the United States and kind of all the time, you know, I was comparing with Brazil and see what was equal and was not. And of course here it's, it's way beyond front of Brazil about music education. Um, but like, to see like the band programs, how strong they are and and how the community work together was something that popped up like my eyes. See the parents involved in, and see the community that like really like engage to help that the bands, the marching band program. It's something that was like for me was was unbelievable. It's, it's amazing. You know, it's it's Maybe, I know, maybe some schools, they don't have like the community engagement, but those like schools that work like Glendora and, and those Osos, I could tell you that the parents was, they was present and was amazing how they support the program, support the kids, and it was, was really good. And for educational like system, it work as a, with a, I had opportunity to work with a two great, persons like Mr. Schwartz that has a lot of experience in, at Glendora High School that I learned a lot from him and, and the way to, to, to play the lessons and to, to create a rehearsal schedule and what work and how to build the skills to play the repertoire was, was a really great experience for me. And work at Los Osos with uh, Mr. Solomon Sina was great because he's a young band director. He has a lot of new ideas, but also the way that 
that he was so engaged with his work with the the love that he put in his work was was amazing and and i could tell that i could see this in the in the, the students eyes they was they were all engaged in doing the rehearsal we had like zero period rehearse was just 6 45 a.m that's really it's a big challenge and for me we're just like oh really he said yeah it's six six forty five and six thirty you see like all the kids was there and they were the leadership it was something that's really important to them. so they were responsible to like to set up the stage to make everything happen to six forty five we I was ready to do, to give the downbeat and then it was amazing how the kids were engaged with, with that like for some, for me in Brazil, like six forty five a.m. to tell my students in Brazil I have a hero, so that was a <laughs> was a big challenge if I need to say that. Okay. Uh, but he was just like, all right, that was amazing, you know. And to see, I worked there like I said December until the COVID hit and right. it stopped. But we had two concerts and and like mid December was not a lot. Just like a week and a half a year or so, January, February, March, like in four months, like we prepared two different concerts with two different repertoire in a high school was 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 amazing. And to see the kids like engaged like every day, like six four to five a.m. read to hear was for me was was like was paid. <laughs> okay. So I, I I guess I'm thinking because you had mentioned in, in Brazil, when you're participating in the conservatories, um, that you have, there's a tuition, a little bit of tuition bit to rent out the instruments. So I'm thinking, okay, well, because you're having to rent, you're, there's, a, there's a sense of responsibility. In the US, that, that's a little bit trickier. Um, you can't obligate people to, to pay to rent the instruments. You, you, know, you can ask for donations, depends on, mm -hmm. what, on what state. So, you know, because students are having to pay or being asked to pay in Brazil, I think there's a little bit more involvement, but would you say, how, would it be equal involvement between the United States and, and Brazil? It's kind of, I would say half and a half. Okay. So I pay to, to my instrument, uh, to rent my instrument from the universe. I had the trumpet, when I played trumpet, I had for the, for the high school, they gave to me. It's not gave, they, during your time, school time, they give the instrument to you. So you play okay. in the end of the year that you need to send back. Right. Um, but it's, it's, I believe that one time when you pay, you learn to be more responsible because you pay for that. Uh, and you know the, the price. And, and it's something that thinking the educational side and thinking nowadays, with the kids that we have, uh, they need to understand that everything there's a price to pay. Sometimes it's not money. Um, they need to deserve something. Um, when I started to do a work with my, my band program in Brazil, I had old instruments and new instruments. So of course, all the kids, they want the new instrument. Right. Because yeah. shine, because works better, blah, blah, blah. But I said, okay, do you get a new instrument you need to deserve? You need to show that you are, have a compromise with the band. You need to show that you practice your part. So that way, if I see you grow as a musician and as a person, I, you can grow as a, have a better instrument. So it's, it's something that I, I try to do in Brazil, even if I didn't know how it works in the US by that mm -hmm. time. But it's I, I started to do my 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 own projects in Brazil. I did that with my students. And, and for me, I need to pay my fresh horn, I need to pay. Okay. All right. Now I've seen a couple of you're very famous on YouTube. There's a couple of um different videos of you playing in, in, in competitions, um, in contests, and in you know, as a French horn player um, and as a conductor. Do you feel, is there more of those opportunities in Brazil than there are in the US that you witnessed or you experienced? I think in US, you still have more. Okay. You know, it's, 
in Brazil, we still have some competitions like as a performer and as a conductor, but it's, uh, like I said, you need to fight for, you need to go ahead and look for. So uh, for me as a, as a French horn performance, to play in a youth orchestras and in professional orchestras, you need to go through audition. Um, you know, as a audition, as a, as a, as a performance, it's not, it's not easy because you have a lot of people like fight that position because it's a paid position. So okay. you want to get paid. So uh, you need to go through audition. So you need to be, have this kind of competitive side. Right. Uh, in a band, the same way uh, as, a, as a band competition, they have a, they have a award for the best conductor. Like they rate the bands and also rate the conductors. And, and for me to be like day by day in the conservatory and see the great conductors from my city, make me learn all some of the techniques and bring that, that for my band. And like during the competition, get some of the, the first place as a best conductor. But it's, it's a, I think it's here in the United States still have more opportunities. Like okay. as a, as a I see a lot of like competitions for young young musicians. Like right, yeah. A lot of auditions, like uh, orchestras or conservatory, they do like the young soloists. So if you win the competition, you're going to play with the orchestra. In Brazil, we have that, but it's more about uh, I would say it's a, more about high qualified people. It's more like a big performers. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Cool. So. You're studying in Brazil. What brings you to the US? How, how did that come about? All right. So, okay, let's, let's open the book. Let's take the test. <laughs> um, in 2013, uh, I started to work in a social project in Brazil. The, the director, is, uh, his name is Alex Klein. He was the first oboe for Chicago Symphony for 10 years. Okay. He's an amazing musician, he's an amazing person. And he started, I remember he said, they said, hey, there's this music festival in the United States um, for chamber music, for wind, like wind, uh, woodwind quintet. Uh, and he sent for all the teachers, if you want to be a part, let me know. I can put you in connection with the teachers and help you to during the audition process. And United States, that was, was kind of a dream for me. You know, it's a, I was just like seeing YouTube videos about the marching band, about the orchestras, and it's a different country, you know. And for me, I was just like, okay, I want to go to United States, why not? And, and I, I went through the audition for this um, music festival, it was in Wisconsin, called uh, Madeline Island. Okay. It's, uh, they have this uh, chamber camp, music camp, they have woodwind quintet and they have a string quintet. It's a different season. Um, and I told him, said, hey, I want to go and said, all right. So here's the link, record yourself, um, put in YouTube, send the links and the application and let's see it. So I got like a 50% scholarship. Okay, but cool. Even though like was a 50% for me in Brazil, because you know, the economy just like, for me, it was a lot of money. And I said, all right, I need to make this work. That's a great opportunity. And in, at the same time, I said, all right, I'm going to United States. I don't know if I'm going to like come back to United States again. So I need to do whatever I want to do that. Right. So I, I start to talk with friends in Brazil that have connections with a drum, drum corps here in the United States. Because as a band director in Brazil, it's like drum corps is a big like event said, oh, there's an opportunity to go to, ha one time you go to US, you can be volunteer with one of the drum parts. It's true, can it, is this possible? Yes. So they create this connection, it's a decadence. So to be a volunteer, I said, all right. And then I start thinking, okay, I had, by that time I had my bachelor degree. I said, maybe it's time to think about my master degree. So why not to like go to some schools and talk with some teachers? So I went to Memphis, the University of Memphis to talk about the master degree program and said, right, so everything works well. So I went to the music festival 
I was amazing week, like a lot of work, it was really hard work because it's, first it was the language. My English right. was really, really based, it's still in process. <laughs> it's second language is not easy at all. But by that time I was really like, I think I had like just one year of private lessons in Brazil. And I came to US by myself. I didn't have teacher, I came by myself. And so my teacher says, if I, I don't know if I was like strong enough to go by myself, but okay, you great, go. So yeah, so I went to the music festival, it was like a good experience, like be exposed to good musicians, um, to be exposed to a different language. And then drum corps that's create kind of a connection that I still have, friends that I still have. Right. Uh, uh, and to be in the universe of Memphis and talk with teachers and have lessons and it was, was a good opportunity. So I back to Brazil. Okay. But what happened is in the back to Brazil after I think it was 60 days here in the United States, when I back to Brazil. I had my my mind that I want to make the things happen in Brazil the way that happens in the United States. The chamber ensembles and the bands. But for me, it was a shock because I didn't have the, the same support that the problems have here in the United States. Um, and it was between, I can tell, between 13 and 16 was three years of uh, <laughs> mentally hard for me because uh, I had this conception that how to do the things in the right way that happened here in the United States, but it was really, really hard to put in like in a practical way in Brazil. And, and but I was not said, you know what? I want to come back to do my master's degree in the United States. And that was my goal. So, but I still have the language like challenge. So I studied more English and then I came to APU 2016, I applied to be a, a part of the studio of Professor James Thatcher, French Horn, and I was accepted and yeah, so here I am. Yeah, yeah, and so for, for people who don't know who James Thatcher is, you want a brief, brief plug for him? All right, Mr. James Thatcher, he was a, uh, one of the, he was not, he is one of the greatest French horns players that I know, but he was one of the first French horn player for John Williams during like amazing re records. I think he has more than, I don't want to guess, but it's more than a thousand like move um, uh, soundtrack records. It, it's it's way more. I don't right, know. Yeah. Remember. Um, and, and he's like a star, French horn star. And, and for me, we're just like, wow, I'm going to have lessons with that guy. <laughs> with the, yeah, with the best. Yeah, and all the big souls of uh, Jurassic Park, Star Wars, and, and was James Thatcher. So it's, yeah. it, you can listen those old like moves, John Williams move records and his sound is amazing. Yeah, you'll and, hear. He's a great teacher and, and I can tell you it's like, for me it was a life change when I start to have lessons with James Thatcher because it's, I, I, I knew James as a performance, but be, be, have the opportunity to be with him in his, his studio for two years was the opportunity to learn about James Thatcher as a teacher. And he's like, I would say like, He's a great star, French horn performance, and he's a great star teacher. He's a maze teacher. Yeah, yeah, not, not a lot of people like that. A lot of people who are great teachers were not too great performers, or a lot of great performers, but they're not great teachers. Yeah, we know that normally happens, but in his case, I, I, I can tell you that he's a really amazing teacher. Yeah, yeah. So, so you came to APU, you were studying, you got your, um, your diploma, right? That was like a um, an artist yeah, certificate. Art certificate, yes. Artist certificate in the French horn, and then from there, you're like, why not get a master's degree in conducting? Yes, it's my first plan was in Brazil before I moved to US. I was a French horn performance, but I was like between 
fresh horn conductor, fresh horn conductor. Okay. And I was more working, I would say like 7% of my time was more teaching than playing in Brazil. So I had this idea to do my master in conducting. But like I said, I had the problem with language. So until uh, I knew that APU had this program in our certificate that they didn't require by that time the English proficiency. So I said, okay. So my plan was that, okay, I wanna apply for this art certificate. Be good for me to like, to keep my, put my, my chops as a fresh one play in a place because I'm going to play a lot. And at, at the same time, I can improve my English to go to my master degree. And okay. that, 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 so during my time I was like doing fresh one, but here in the United States, like, listen English all the time, I mean, speaking English, it's something that make your language going better and better. Right. So it's, a, I was, I did an English test at the end of my art certificate and I passed and I went, I was accepted to do my master degree. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So um, before we, we're going to end pretty soon here, um, but can you talk about, I guess, somebody who's looking to to do a master's degree what would what, what would you tell them like how, how how can they best prepare to 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 take that on someone's going to look today or tomorrow and they're like i'm going to i'm thinking about doing a master's degree what what are some things i should consider i think it's uh we know that master degree is something that you're going to have a deep knowledge of things it's, we know during the undergrad, you have music history class, uh, you can have some conducting class, but when you go to your master degree, you need to understand that the things is going to be deeper. So you're going to going through a lot of books that you're going to understand why Beethoven put you know, this kind of accent in his music, why, why Mozart have this kind of style, different style. And, and it's kind of a deeper knowledge. Uh, um, and also in the technique, if you if you are music performers, if you are a trumpet, fresh horn, violin, it's, it's, you know that the repertoire that you're going to work in your master degree, it's harder than the repertoire that you work in your undergrad because it's going to require you more techniques and, and that's the thing because it's the goal is when you finish your master, you have more knowledge and also more techniques than when you start. So it's a, it's a I don't want to say high level, but it's something that after that you need to, you're going to be a better performer, so you're going to be a better teacher. Right. At some level, you're more than you're an expert. <laughs> yes. It's you be like, let's, talk about like the name master you, you're going to be a, a master degree you're going to be a, you're going to have more knowledge about that specific area if you like are going to do your master in education you're going to have more knowledge as a teaching like ways you're going to understand more teaching techniques if you're going to do your master in, in like I said, in, in instrumental or conducting, you're going to have more focus in your conducting or in your performance. Uh, it's it's something deeper, you know. It's like you're going to you're going to grow for sure, but it's you need to understand that is a. For me, it was a hard when I started to do my master because it's uh, require you to spend more time reading. Uh, it's, it, require you to spend more time practicing and because everything need to be really strong. You need to be a strong performance and you need to be stronger, like person to talk and, and to explain about different topics in a different language. Right. It's, it's, it's something that for sure is it's, it's hard, but pay the price. Right, it's worth it at the end. Yeah, there's no, there's no sleeping when you get your master's degree. Sleep. Oh yes. <laughs> Sleeping is not a thing. No, you don't need to sleep. You need to to set. <laughs> yeah. What is uh um we we um oh gosh it's um we're suffering we're we're suffering um 
It's good suffering. Yeah. It's a good suffering. Like I said, it's, I learned like early on with a friend of Brazil that there is nothing possible in your life. You need to be ready to pay the price for whatever you want. So I learned that in Brazil and it's something that every time when I went back to Brazil and I, we met and I, I always tell him, say, thank you for what you, you said. It was, was, a, was a life lesson. And I now tell my students, say, there is nothing possible. You need to pay the price. And the price is not about money. The price is it, it's, it's about suffering. It's just like, sometimes you, you instead of like being your weekend, during the during the whole weekend, like watching movies or going to the beach or going to the park, you spend your weekend studying. Yeah. Um, it, it, but if you want this, you need to make work, and, and that's a sacrifice, and it's, it's, that's the price that you need to pay. Right. Yeah. So, what has been? Can you identify one important lesson that you learned? That you would share with somebody else something you know throughout your time that you said man this was an impactful something impactful in my life that would help somebody else or just something that you know i'm glad i had that type of experience that prepared me for later on in my life i think it's the thing that i just said to you a couple minutes ago for me was a life change and and your friend telling you that yes it's it's something that is a kind of a device that work to different areas. Work in your personal life, work in your professional life, in your educational life, whatever. And we need to understand that the life is it's, it's hard itself. And sometimes we don't need to spend time think about the problems. What do you need to do with think about how to solve the problems. Uh, the problem is, is, is there in front of you. So if you just say, oh, I have a problem. Oh, I have a problem. It doesn't work. It's not going to help you anyway. So instead you say that, instead you keep saying that you have a problem, try to find a solution. And it's, it's this kind of life lessons that you can apply for everything. Right. So I, like yeah, I can apply this for music. When you have like a hard like concept piece that you need to study, instead we say like, "Oh, this is impossible. I'm never going to play that." Instead, you say that you say, "Okay, it's different, but I can try. I can do it. It's it's, it's not impossible. What's the difference? You need to pay the price. You need to work hard. You need to practice more to this. You need to find the techniques that make you strong to play that kind of repertoire." As a conductor, I, I never can say I'm not going to conduct in, um, <clears throat> Firebird or, or different like hard piece of, <clears throat> excuse me, right of the spring. What I need to do, just like I need to study. I need to go sit down and study. It, that's the thing. It's, 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 I think the key for everything is here in the mind. Right. One time when you put the things right in your mind, <clears throat> everything well, everything else works well. And that's the thing that I learned like early with some friends and teachers. They are teachers in university now. And the other side, I said, it's, I tell my students, sometimes it's, the problem is not, sometimes it's not like the time that you practice. It's how you practice. And, and talk about like time, how was your time? <clears throat> we don't need to, to play the same thing that you know how to play well. You need to focus on the thing where you know what is the problem. Fix that. And the good thing about teaching, when I teach my students, it's not all about music. It's how to use the music uh, advice in a personal life. Right. So I tell my students, say, hey, that's the way that it is. If you play something and you start to play wrong, you need to stop. You don't need to play wrong. Keep playing wrong. You need to stop, come back, think what is the problem, think how to fix it and go in the right way. And this is the kind of thing that 
I learned with the music, but I'm putting my personal life. If you start to go to a different way that's wrong, you don't need to keep doing the same thing wrong in your life. Just come back. Stop. Stop what you're doing wrong. Come back. Fix it. Think how to fix it. And go in the right way. So this kind of, for me, just like, thing that I learned with the life that I bring to the music, and thing that I learned with the music that I bring to my life. I put everything together in help. I can tell it helps a lot. Great, great. No, that's, yeah, that, that's totally true. You know, and I try doing that too with my students, taking, taking ideas and thoughts from music and then, you know, how can we apply it to our personal lives? So, uh, Wooker, thank you so much for, for being a part of um, the program today. Appreciate your insight and your experience and, and your willingness to share with us. Um, of course you know, your, your musical journey. So yeah. um, thanks so much. Um, until next time, I'd love to have you back again. Thank you. I appreciate your time and I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of my life and my experience. And I hope it helps everyone else. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure somebody's going to find this and they're going to they're gonna be able to take something out of this. All right, great. Um, thank you so much. Have a good one. Right. Talk to you soon. Bye.